Hey guys, Harrison here, and if you've heard a thing or two about Micro Four Thirds, then you'd know that one of its biggest advantages is that you can adapt lenses from pretty much any other manufacturer onto Micro Four Thirds bodies, and that includes a whole bucket load of vintage lenses. And now here with me, I've got an incredibly popular older vintage lens. It's the Helios 44-2, well known for creating that incredible swirly bokeh effect. So let's chuck it on my Lumix G7 and see how it performs on a micro four thirds body. So I chucked this lens onto my Lumix G7 and took it out to shoot for a bit and I found that while I was able to get loads of beautiful little bokeh balls in my shots, I really did struggle to get that swirling bokeh effect that this lens can normally produce on a camera with a larger sensor, like a full frame camera or even just an APS-C camera. So why is this? Why aren't we getting the swirling that we'd expect from this lens if we were shooting on a larger format camera? Honestly, I think it just comes down to the way that the lens is interacting with the smaller micro four thirds sensor on my camera. And it might also be due to the 2x crop factor on my micro four thirds body, turning this lens from a 58 millimeter lens into a 116 millimeter full frame equivalent focal length. I honestly have no idea exactly how it works. I'm not, not quite a lens expert myself just yet, but between those two things, it's probably a pretty good grounds to say that it's just not gonna perform the same way on a micro four thirds body as it would on a larger format camera. The crop factor is also another pretty important thing that you'd wanna consider because it does turn this lens into much more of a telephoto prime lens on a micro four thirds body compared to the wider focal length that it'd give you on a full frame body. So that'll end up just making it a bit harder to use this lens for things like portraiture or for things like street photography compared to on a full frame body. This does not mean that this lens is pointless to have for a micro four thirds camera body. And in fact, it's one of my favorite lenses to use with my Lumix G7. But what it does mean is that you might just have to end up adjusting your expectations a bit for what you're gonna get out of this lens on a micro four thirds camera. So if after all of that, you're still ready to use the Helios 44-2 on your micro four thirds camera body, first of all, great, I am sure you'll love it. Second of all, you're gonna need to pick up some sort of adapter to convert the M42 screw mount on the Helios 44-2 to the Micro Four Thirds mount on your camera. So an adapter just like this Fotgo on here works great. I think it costs about 10 bucks. And all you've got to do is you just screw it onto the lens and there you go. Now it's on and you can just mount that onto your Micro Four Thirds camera and you're ready to go. The lens is fully manual, so there's really not much in the adapter. It's just a piece of metal to, you know, push out the lens a bit so that it can focus properly. But if you are interested in picking one up, I'll have a link to one in the video description where you can grab one. I'll try and link to this one or I'll link to a similar one and I'll stick a link to the lens itself down there as well and you can check both those out. So those are the only real differences that you'll find if you're using this lens on a Micro Four Thirds body compared to a larger format camera body. And while they certainly are some pretty big differences, I still think there's a whole lot to love about this lens, even on a Micro Four Thirds body. You still get the great full metal construction of the lens, you still get the buttery smooth focus ring, and you still get that special, just that vintage look to your photos that modern lenses just don't really give you. Personally, I love this lens, and considering it only costs me about 50 bucks to grab the lens, plus another 10 for the adapter, I'd say it's a great way to try out some vintage style photography, even on a newer, even on a micro four thirds camera body. So that just about wraps up this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe down below. And I'd also love it if you could check out my Instagram account for all my photography, where I've posted tons of photos that I've taken on this lens, as well as lots and lots of other photos. So it'd be awesome if you could check that out. If you have any ideas for some future videos that you'd like to see or some gear that you'd like me to review, I'd love it if you could let me know in the comment section down below. Apart from that though, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.